The president of the African Development Bank, Dr. Akiwumi Adeshino, says the bank is aiming to create 25 million new jobs by 2025. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. These are the top 10 stories now. At number 10, Boko Haram insurgents have launched a fresh attack on Dambua town in Borno state, killing two mobile policemen. The insurgents also burnt down the Mopo station, which served as a barracks, as well as the civilian joint task force outpost in the town. A humanitarian source narrated that the insurgents drove into Dambua from Biu Road around 5.30 p.m. on Thursday in eight gun trucks and operated for over one hour. When they got into the town, they headed straight to the Mopol barracks and started shooting indiscriminately. They killed two Mopol and raised down the whole building. They also burned down two Mopol vehicles. At number 9, the Senate has proposed increased funding for the Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs in order to sustain peace in the Niger Delta region. The Senate Committee on Niger Delta Affairs suggested this during the Ministry's 2022 Budget Defense Session on Thursday. The Minister for Niger Delta Affairs, Gosul Akpabiu, had earlier appeared before the panel to give details of the Ministry's spending for 2021 and also to defend the 2022 budget proposal. Senator James Manager, a member of the committee, complained that the budget allocated to the Ministry in 2021 and 2022 was too mega to achieve anything meaningful in the region. The senator made the plea despite a history of misappropriation of funds in the Niger Delta Development Commission, a key agency under the ministry. At number 8, the National Pension Commission has introduced a non-interest fund and has issued an operational framework on it to pension contributors and retirees. The head corporate communications of PENCOM, Peter Agahoa, made the disclosure in a statement made available to newsmen on Thursday in Lagos State. The initiative, according to Agahoa, was in furtherance of the implementation of the multi-fund investment structure, which seeks to provide investment portfolio choices to pension contributors and retirees. At number seven, U.S. President Joe Biden and his wife Jill met with Pope Francis, the universal head of the Catholic Church, at the Vatican on Friday. According to the White House, the meeting between Biden and Pope Francis at about 12 p.m. would focus on the fight against the coronavirus pandemic. This is as world leaders flock to Rome for the G20 summit. Biden also met with French President Emmanuel Macron at the start of a trip aimed at reasserting U.S. international credentials. Shortly before leaving Washington, the U.S. President unveiled an historic blueprint for remaking America's economy, but it remains to be seen if he can persuade lawmakers to back it. At number six, President Muhammad Buhari has approved the construction of a 14-bed presidential clinic at the State House. The Permanent Secretary, State House, Tijani Umar, announced this on Thursday during the budget defense before the Senate Committee on Federal Character and Intergovernmental Affairs. Tijani said the construction of the clinic, which was awarded to Julius Berger Nigeria Limited for 21.9 billion naira, will commence on Monday. He added that the project will be completed in December 2022. At number five, the federal government says it is upgrading security measures in all airports across Nigeria to prevent terrorist acts and other crimes. The managing director of the Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria, Rabiu Yadudu, stated this at the National Aviation Security Day and Awards 2021 in Abuja on Thursday. He said the government was deploying additional technology to advance aviation security in the nation's airports. Yadudu said, as we speak, biometallic security fence with anti-climb has been installed in airports like Benin, Ilorin, Ibadan and Portakot. The upgrade of the CCTV surveillance monitoring systems has been concluded and operational at the Mutala Mohamed International Airport and four other international airports, while efforts are ongoing to provide the same level of coverage for the domestic airports. At number four, popular journalist Dele Momodu has joined the People's Democratic Party. The former presidential candidate, who announced this in a statement on Friday, said he joined the opposition party after wide consultation, adding that he re-entered politics so as to contribute meaningfully to the development of the country. Recall that Momodu contested the 2011 presidential election on the platform of the National Conscience Party, but former President Goodluck Jonathan won the election. At number three, the Minister of Defense, Major General Bashar Salihu Magashi, alongside other service chiefs, arrived in Meduguri, Bonu State on Friday, October 29. Bashar said the delegation of all service chiefs to assess ongoing counter-insurgency operations in Bonu. 
The security chiefs held a closed-door meeting with the theater commander of Operation Hadinkai, Major General C.G. Musa, along with his field commanders. The meeting is coming less than 24 hours after ISOP fighters attacked Dambua town, where four persons were killed. At number two, the co-chairperson of the National Consultative Front, Professor Pat Utomi, has revealed that he will soon meet with the former chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Atahiru Jega, and Olisa Agbakoba, the leader of the National Political Coalition on Electoral Reforms. Utomi, who spoke on Friday, announced that the meeting will birth a credible alternative mega ideological party by November. According to a statement by Tanko Yunusa, the head of public affairs, the NC Front chairperson declared that the aim is to depose the ruling All Progressives Congress and the People's Democratic Party. Yunusa said Utomi's meeting with Jaga will discuss how to get the civil society, labor movement, like minded individuals, political leaders, and groups on board. Finally, at number one, the president of the African Development Bank, Dr. Akiwumi Adeshino, says the bank is aiming to create 25 million new jobs by 2025. Adeshino said this when he delivered a lecture on social media, national security, and social change, bridging the gap for development in Africa in Lagos. Details of his lecture were contained in a statement issued by the bank on Friday in Abuja. It said additional underscored the enormous potential that Nigeria has for attracting global digital commerce and financial services. The AFDB president also revealed that the bank was investing heavily in quality infrastructure to transform the backbone of Africa's technological revolution. Always remember to wear your mask, wash your hands and stay safe. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.